You are listening to The Michael Lodge Show. Wealth, business, and taxes. Oh, yeah, and some politics. Let's get started. And welcome to The Michael Lodge Show. This is Michael Lodge. I'm glad that you have joined me this morning. This is a Monday morning, final countdown to Christmas and the end of the year. But it's the final countdown to Christmas. I hope, I hope, I hope that you all have not overspent. I hope that you have gotten everything that you need to get and that you haven't overdone it. Because we have... Because, you know, we're these human beings and we always feel as though that we have to just get a little bit more, a little bit more to please people. But you don't need to please people. You just need to give respectfully and that's it. I know because I've been in that situation where I thought, well, I'll just buy a little bit more, just a little bit more. I'll get this for this and that. And pretty soon I'm, I've am i gone crazy. But this year I had a budget. I kept to that budget. And I am in the right spot. Listen, you know, we're we're two weeks now away from the end of the year. And this is going to be the last time I get to give give this lecture to you. And it's a good lecture, so stay tuned. Get your cup of coffee. And stay tuned because it's it's important that we talk about this. I've I've talked about it throughout the course of the year, but this is my last time to talk to you about the subject of personal finances in your small business. Now I have been saying for the last few weeks now, and I've been pushing you guys to please sit down with your journal, with a piece of paper, whatever you have to do, and lay out. A strategy for 2021. It's very important because if you haven't planned your financial your financials for 2021, you're going to be living the same year as 2020 or 2019, whichever it is. But in other words, you're just repeating the past. You're not moving forward. Now, I have given you a free a free personal budget on my website and you can go to it just go to www.lodge-co.com and go and click on the tab up above that says 60 minute business okay 60 minute um 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 it gives you 60 minutes to spend time with me if you want but there is a tab within there that is for your personal budget and you can download it and use it for whatever you want. If you're good in Excel, it's in Excel. So if you're good in Excel, you need to add some other things to it, go ahead, do it. But I've given you all 12 months so you can plan out all 12 months and you can also record what you actually did, your actuals, compared to the budget that you set for 2021. Now, I'm telling you this because... It's very, very important that you and I, everyone that's around us, have a budget, have a projected income that's coming in, we have our projected expenses going out, and we begin looking at items that we can cut, that we can save money. Because if you've got debt, that should be your number one priority to get rid of that debt. I don't like that. I hate that. And if you can get rid of that, then you can start putting money away for savings. Get rid of the debt and start putting money away for savings. Your 401k plans or retirement plans or whatever you need to do. Because I tell you that age, listen, I'm speaking from experience because at that age rolled up on me as fast as lickety split, as my mom used to say. And it went by fast. Life goes by fast. It zooms by fast. And if you're not planned for your retirement, then when you get to that age, you're going to have to keep working because you have no, you know, Social Security might not be here by the time you 
you get ready to say, okay, I'm going to retire. So it's you and I have a responsibility, and that responsibility is a big one. One, it's an it's a ethical one, because if we're not looking forward, and we're not planning ahead forward-wise with our my, money, money, with our money, we're kind of stupid. And I, I hate to be sitting around being stupid. So listen, I want you to go to, it's free, there's no charge, there's no sales gimmick here, nothing whatsoever. Just go, I provided it for you because I thought you needed it. Go to lodge, L-O-D-G-E dash C-O dot com. Click on the tab, it's right about in the middle of the top of my website. It says 60 minute business advice. Click on that and then go down below, you'll see that there's a budget there for you. Use it. Work with it. Make sure that that you're planning for the future. Now, if you don't want to use that, then I want you guys to go out and get a journal, and I want you to begin writing it down. Now, I want you to look at, you know what your income has been for 2020. First line, income, sources of income. My job, I have an investment account, that's cash coming in. So you want to know exactly what kind of money you're going to have available to you for 2020. Then I want you to start writing down all of your expenses, your utility bills, your, your telephone, your car expenses, your gasoline expenses, uh, repairs on the car, uh, any auto uh, um, auto in, uh, what do you call it auto payments that you need to make. Um, the uh, DMV fees that you're going to have to pay, all the known items that you have paid last year, write them down as your budget, okay? If they're going to increase, increase it. If it's going to go down, reduce it. But make sure you've got all those things added. So you know at the very top, you know what your income is going to be, the cash that's going to be flowing in. Now, if you know that you're, Wages are seventy five thousand dollars a year. Put the net, okay? You you get you'll be getting your you 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 have gotten your final uh, paycheck for twenty twenty already. Look at your past paycheck. Look at your year to date of how much money you you have come. In other words, not what you are supposed to make seventy five thousand, but minus all the taxes and everything else. SDI, um, federal, social security, all that other stuff. So once you have listed all of your expenses and you have a total for all those expenses, then you subtract it from your income, total income. Then you need to spread it out over the months. January, February, March, April, May, June, July. And show exactly what your what your income, what your expenses are on a monthly basis, and what your take-home, in other words, your net cash that's going to be available to you. Now, if your net cash isn't adding up, something's wrong. That means you need to go through this and look at it. So it's just like on a business. Income minus expenses equals net income, right? So we need to look at your cash flow for 2021. Because you're going to have to do some planning. And I'm going to give you a warning sign here, okay? The economy, we don't know in which direction it's going to go. Right now, it's a guess. We are seeing capital and cash from major corporations and investment groups heading out of the United States. Which that kind of gives you an indication that they're thinking that the taxes are not going to be very happy. I mean, they're not going to be very good for all of us. Because that's all we know right now on the Biden um, economy is that he's going to raise taxes on all of us. Not just the millionaires, but on everybody. Don't, Don't ever believe that he's going to attack the rich because what they think of rich is includes you and me, 
okay? We could be making $50,000 a year and we're considered rich by, by, by the Democrats. So we don't know what's going to happen on the economy. We also know that small business uh, confidence levels in the United States economy dropped by 2% as of November, dropped. And if it continues to drop, that's going to tell us that small business is not confident in what's going to happen with the new economic policies coming out of the White House under Biden. Biden. And we also know that if the Senate, the United States Senate, is given over to the Democrats off the Georgia election that's coming up in January, if that goes Democrat, that means that those taxes are automatically going to go up. However, if the Republicans keep the Senate, that means they'll be able to fight off some of these tax increases that Democrats are doing. So it's a check and balance. And that's really what we need is a check and balance. So if we can keep those... And remember, Trump, some, of his, some of Trump's tax, tax policies are going to end... I believe it's in 2025. So we've got a little bit of time to hold the Senate, keep it solid, and so that the Democrats cannot go in there and start raising taxes. It just can't be done. But if it does, it's going to hit your pocketbook. So the the main thrust of my conversation here is, is spend your money conservatively. In other words, don't spend it on items that you don't need. Don't splurge. Don't do all of this nonsense that people do. Even if you get a raise, stop putting that money away because you don't know when a rainy day is going to happen. And let me tell you, when that rain starts coming down, you need, you need a cash flow, a cash backup, an emergency plan, if you want to call it that, to back you up doing those rainy days. I just don't see a good economic forecast at the moment for 2021. I've been looking for it, but I don't see it because we still don't know in which direction Joe Biden's going to go. And that's a big problem. And we should have known this by now through the campaign, but we saw nothing of Joe Biden. We saw nothing of his economic plan And the only thing that we ever heard over and over and over again, that he's going to raise taxes. So that's the only thing that we know at the moment. There's absolutely nothing of benefit that we know about his economic policy. So, and then you people in small business, and I love you guys so very much. You have had a tough year as small business. And you have had that situation where you were almost killed. You were almost destroyed because of, of government interaction within your business, telling you to shut down. And you shut down. And a lot of you are no longer in business, but you still have to file your tax return. And some of you are still in business and you have to plan for 2021. So I'm suggesting this to each and every single one of you, individual and business. You have exactly two weeks. In fact, you don't even have that long. You have today, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and a little bit of Thursday. And then all the next few weeks of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and again Thursday. So you've got eight days to pick up your phone and call your tax accountant. And if you're not doing that, you're being stupid. Because if you are not calling them right now, because there's a whole bunch of tax changes that took effect in 2021, especially if you're a small business. If you haven't been talking to your tax practitioner throughout these last few months, and looking at all of the provisions that have come out of Congress, especially when it relates to COVID 
19. And all of the things that were postponed on payroll taxes and everything else. If you haven't been talking to your tax practitioner, you need to be talking to them. And I've told you this time and time again, that you need to, within these last few days, sit down with your tax practitioner and see if there isn't anything else that you can do tax-wise to help you out for 2020 and to plan for 2021. I believe in working with tax practitioners. Now, if your tax practitioner isn't proactive that way and isn't reaching out to you, maybe it's time that you got a new tax practitioner. But it's time that you and your tax practitioner sit down within the next few days and plan how to end 2020 and how to plan for 2021. And I would suggest that you start reading up on it too. There's lots of articles. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> There's lots of articles out there on Google and every place else. So, what I'm trying to get to is that you've given you've been given some tools now. We've talked about taking a, a journal and writing down your budget for 2021. I've given you a free software, not software, but I've given you a free Excel worksheet to plan your budgets out. And we've also talked about spending some time with your tax practitioner and sitting down and seeing exactly what you need to do. Ending out 2020, planning for 2021. So you have this short period of time now even though I've been warning you about this for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, that you need to sit down and talk about your tax planning for 2021 and ending out the god-awful year of 2020. I love you guys out there, and I want to see you succeed. And it takes some work. It's hard. And it's no fun to sit down and talk about your budgets and your taxes. It's no fun at all. It's hell. But it has to be done. And you have to become proactive in dealing with your personal finances. It's vital. It's, it's, you have to be good stewards. You know God talks about being good stewards of our finances. And that is our responsibility, is to be good stewards of our finances. To be able to take care of our families. To be able to make donations to good causes. To be able to plan for our retirement. To be able to do all this, all these things that are needed. So we, we've talked about your personal finances. We've talked about your small business finances. Now you need to think about one more thing. And I've been talking to my friends and, and, and people out there. If you have not sat down and put yourself a will and a trust together, if you haven't developed one for your family, for you, it's time. Those of you who are 50 and 60 years old, and I know they're out there because they're my friends who I've talked about last week with them on a personal basis, and I hopefully you're listening. <laughs> Sit down and put a will together. Sit down and put a trust together. These things happen too. I tell you, death comes at the most strange times, and we have to be prepared. We have to be able to think forward and to say, how am I going to take care of my family and my children? The taxes that may be sitting there that you, that you haven't thought about. Listen, death and taxes, it never ends. It keeps going on and on and on. So in the death part, you have to think about your will, your trust taking care of the family in the future. It comes when 
I, my mom used to say, oh, it comes like in the death of night. Well, it, sometimes it does. Sometimes it comes when it's so surprising and so shocking, and then you find out there's no will, there's no mechanisms to take care of that death situation. So that's your goals for the next two weeks and then maybe even into the first week of January. Get these things done because if you are a good planner, if you are a good steward, if you are an individual who cares about those around him, you will work on your budget, you will talk to your tax practitioner, and you will find an estate attorney that will put together a good estate for you, a good trust, a good will. A good medical care directive. That's what good people do. They're always thinking ahead. So again, go to my website at www.lodge.co.com. Click on the top middle thing, icon, or whatever you want to call it, the and then we'll say 60-minute tax advice. I mean, 60-minute business advice. I'm sorry, 60-minute business advice. Click on that, and then go down into about the middle portion. You'll see a tab there that says um, um, uh, budget. Click on that, download it, start using it. And then I also want you to to find your tax practitioner's phone number, get your last year's tax return out, Look at it a little bit and start asking, asking questions on how you're going to handle certain things for 2020 and 2021 looking forward. And then I want you to get an attorney and I want you to start planning out your will and your trust and get it done. Because I was shocked this last week. I was talking to my friends who I have known for ages and ages and ages. And I asked them, I said, have you prepared your will? And the answer was no. Now they have a house, they have cars, they've got assets, they've got all this stuff, retirement plans, everything else. But they have told no one of how they want that handled if one of them or both of them should pass away. Or the blunt word, die. Don't Don't wait. Don't let the state decide and probate what's going to happen to your stuff. You're responsible for that. Do it. So listen, I hope that everybody goes out and has a great Christmas. I want you to shop at your small business because they need your help. In fact, they need your love because they've had a tough year. 2021, I mean, sorry, 2020 for the small business it's been a tough year. Support them. Love them. Shop at them. So you have an assignment. Are you going to do it? I hope you do. You have an assignment. You have an assignment and you better do it. Otherwise, I'm coming after you. <laughs> I believe in being proactive. And I believe that you do too. It's just that. Sometimes you just need a little nudge, you need a little shove. Sometimes you need a kick to really think about being proactive on your personal finances and your business finances in your wills and trusts and everything else. You need to do that. Now, in wills and trusts, I'm going to address that in, in January of 2021. I have a whole lecture series on that. Not a lecture series. It's really not a lecture. It's a more of a program. But we're going to talk about how vital it is to have that. We're going to go over some, some statistics and everything else of what happens and what goes on. Listen, I just went through this with my mom. My mom passed away three years ago, and it's taken me three years. Well, no, four years ago. It's taken me four years to close out the trust because of things that happened that we didn't know were sitting there that needed to be corrected. So it took a while. And I don't want you to be in that same boat. When I sat down and and went over the trust and the wills with my mom before she passed away, 
She failed to mention about certain properties that she had put in other people's names and that when that person passed away, would revert back to her name. Well, she didn't tell me that. And that created a probate situation because we had to close out the other person's probate before we could close out my mom's probate. And then we had to transfer the property back into her name. In fact, I had to buy the property back from the people, from the family, who the name was in. and But the rules said that once a person in the will, in the trust, when the person that she had put that name, that property name in, when that person passed away, it automatically went over. But she didn't tell me that. So it took us a while to get everything recorded and sold and bought and and, trans- and transferred over in... It was, a, it was a tough situation, so it's taken me four years to close out a trust because we didn't know certain things were sitting there. So I want you to be proactive also. I want you to sit down and whose name is in what? Is the property name in both of yours and how are you going to handle that in the will and the trust? If one of you should pass away, you need to think about that. Listen, it's Christmas time, so let's put this all this business stuff to the side. It's Christmas time. It's time that you should be spending with your family in love and hold those things so dear to you because every Christmas that you spend with your family creates another memory. And hopefully they're good memories. Every year you see your grandchildren growing up bigger and bigger. You're seeing your own children growing up. And you remember the time when they were children and you look back on those fond memories. Christmas is about developing memories about your family. That's why you have to be together, hold each other together, and love each other during this Christmas holiday. The other thing that we have to focus on is there's a whole bunch of people out there this Christmas who are hurting because they've been affected. They have lost their jobs through COVID-19. They have lost their businesses through COVID-19. They have lost even their families. You would be surprised how many separation agreements I have been putting together in mediation. Because people have spent way too much time together in the house. (laughs) And they're tired of each other and they just want to get rid of each other now. But that's what happens. So people are walking away from situations that that they've been pounded on. So there's a lot of people out there who have not had anything in the way of finances, to really take care of themselves. And they haven't been eating the best food. So if you listen, if you have a can of corn, if you have, if you have flour, if you've got whatever you have in your cupboards that you don't think you're going to use, take it to your local food bank. They need your help because they're out of food. There's so many people that need help. So help. You might have some canned goods in your in your in your pantry or in your in your in your kitchen that someone else probably could use. I always think when I talk about this by the grace of God there goes I when I see people standing in the lines for food pick. I remember driving past one and there was lines. It was all the way down. This is in the heart of COVID. And the line was way down the street. And I'm thinking, my goodness, you know what? That could be me. I was blessed that I can do stuff from home and I can continue working. But there are people who could not. And now, even to this point in time, they're not able to take care of themselves by buying enough groceries to feed their themselves or their family. 
So you know what? We're, we're Americans. We love our Americans. We love our fellow people. We love the individuals that are in our communities who we know are suffering. Reach out. Touch them. Love them. Provide them with food if they need it. Maybe pay a, pay a utility bill. Maybe just help them out in any way. Maybe mow the lawn. Christmas is a giving time. And we should always remember, you know what? That could be me. That could be me. So give. Give from the heart. Love from the heart. This is Christmas. I love Christmas. Everybody go out and have a great, this is Christmas week. Let's really focus on our love for each other. Let's focus on what we need to do with our personal finances and taxes and our wills. Let's focus on that. Let's think about that. Let's put it in, put it on, down on paper. Get your journals out and put it down on paper. And let's work on it. Let's be proactive. Let's be good stewards of our lives. This is Mike Lodge. I'll talk with you soon. Listen, if you have any questions, I forgot to tell you this. If you have any questions or comments, send me a text at 818-252-5682. Again, that's 818-252-5682. Or send me an te- uh, email at info at lodge, L-O-D-G-E dash C-O dot com. And I will respond to you. I promise you I will. I will respond. This is Mike Lodge. Everybody, Merry Christmas. Love you all. Bye-bye. This podcast has been produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content. Talk with you soon. God bless. Love you all.